people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on the South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Terrorists kill municipal councillor in South Kashmir municipal Wama district. Hezbollah Mujahideen's plot to target people based on religion exposed. And Pakistan's human rights records require urgent global attention. After the abrogation of Article 317, August 2019, incidents of violence have reduced significantly in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, New Delhi is working in the valley to implement its vision for development, enhanced governance and socio-economic justice for disadvantaged sections of the population. But this strengthening of democratic machinery in the region has become a thorn in the eye of Pakistani establishment. Park-backed terror groups are attacking elected representatives in the Union Territory. Recently, terrorists killed a municipal councillor in Pulwama district when he was not accompanied by his security personnel, a report. Rakesh Pandita, a municipal councillor and a Kashmiri Pandit, was recently shot dead by terrorists in the Thral Belt of South Kashmir's Pulwama district. The three unidentified terrorists opened fire on the councillor, killing him on the spot. Rakesh Pandita was the chairman of the Thral Municipal Committee and was staying at a government accommodation under security in the Srinagar due to militant threat. However, he had left his security officials behind on his visit to Thral, a militant stronghold and his hometown. As per reports, Pakistani terror group Lashkar-e-Taiba's front organizations have claimed responsibility for the killing of Pandita. It is the third killing of a councillor in Kashmir this year and yet another brutal attack against the minority community in Kashmir Valley. In March, Militants had stormed the office of the Supor Municipal Council and killed two councillors. The killing of an innocent Kashmiri Hindu Pandit is nothing but furtherance of the jihadi agenda of turning Kashmir into a monolith Muslim state with Sharia prevailing all over. It has been done at the behest of Pakistan. Pakistan sponsors these terrorists. Pakistan supports these terrorists. Pakistan is responsible for the killing of thousands of innocent Kashmiris at the hand of these terrorists, just for the sake of ensuring that Kashmir remains in turmoil. Pakistan does not want Kashmir to develop. It has no love loss for Kashmiris. It only wants the Kashmiris to remain backward. Recently, two civilians were also killed in firing by militants in Anantanag district of Jammu and Kashmir. The incident happened in broad daylight when both the individuals were at a grocery shop near Jamia Masjid in Jablipura. The Kashmiri people are outraged and want an end to the cycle of killing innocent people. In the past, Kashmir was a land of peace and serenity, but Pak-sponsored malignant terrorism has ravaged this land. Pakistan is committed to the strategy of supporting terrorism in the valley. Terror camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have been continuously used for decades for fomenting an anti-India sentiment in Kashmir. Active camps in POK and such facilities are used for training and subsequently infiltration into Jammu and Kashmir. Multiple terror teams comprising terrorists from Jaish e Muhammad, Lashkar e Taiba, and Hezbollah Mujahideen have been regularly camping in various forward areas of Pakistan occupied Kashmir with the intention of infiltrating into India to carry out attacks in Kashmir and beyond. Pakistan, though, remains in a constant mode of denial. But the fact is, 
that numerous training camps are running in park occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Despite the ceasefire in the LOC, Pakistan has not given up its support for terrorism. It continues to train terrorists. Yesterday's act in Kashmir, in Taral, will force India to take action against these terrorists. And one option to India is to hit at these training camps inside POJK. Pakistan has always denied the existence of militant training camps in POK. India is faced with no other option but to cut through the chase and eliminate terror camps in Pakistan by its own ways and strategies. Hence, Pakistan should immediately dismantle terrorist camps operating from its soil and territories under its control. Now we move to Pakistan, where serious human rights violation, including lack of government accountability and abuses often go unpunished, fostering a culture of impunity among perpetrators, whether official or unofficial. Various reports issued by different agencies are continuously revealing unlawful killings and forced disappearances in Pakistan. We take a look. On many occasions, various global reports have revealed troubling human rights abuses in Pakistan. These reports clearly say that various law enforcement agencies in Pakistan are responsible for human rights violations in Muslim-majority country. Recently, Pakistan's own Human Rights Commission in its annual report said that as in preceding years, Pakistan witnessed substantial human rights violations in 2020 from forced conversions of religious minorities and crimes against women to enforce disappearances and crabs on freedom of expression. The report said that at least 10 journalists were murdered and several others threatened, kidnapped, tortured and arrested while discharging their professional responsibilities. Curbs on the media continue in Pakistan with many journalists complaining that they are compelled to self-censor for fear of being persecuted by either non-state or state actors. Human rights in Pakistan are extremely shocking. Minorities have no rights in the country and it's not only the religious minorities, the Hindus or the Sikhs, it is also the ethnic minorities which are discriminated very heavily. Pashtuns have launched a major movement seeking their rights as the military trampled on their grounds for the last many years. The tribals have been denied all rights of engagement. In Baluchistan, again, the story is the same. In fact, there are increasing concerns in other provinces of Pakistan, such as Sindh, and we find no improvement so far. The concept of human rights simply does not exist in Pakistan because the country is ruled by a brutal army that does not believe in human rights, civil liberties and rights for the common people. Baluchistan is a cauldron of the worst human rights violations in Pakistan. The Pakistani forces see coronavirus conditions as being more suitable to whisk away people in Balochistan. Almost every family in Balochistan has at least one member missing, including females and children. And families of persons who have disappeared continue to struggle for their voices to be heard. Meanwhile, armed sector in groups including Lashkar e Jangvi, Tehrik e Taliban Pakistan, and others designated as terrorist organizations by the US and other governments continue to stage attacks targeting Shia Muslims, including the predominantly Shia Hazara community. In Pakistan, the fundamental rights of minority communities are frequently violated, with a major cause being blasphemy accusations and the violence that surrounds these allegations. Discriminatory laws in Pakistan and their implementation has been a very, very great concern for the global community. Recently, the European, European Parliament also passed a resolution in this respect. The blasphemy law in particular has been used and abused, not just by the state, 
but by various other non-state entities to discriminate against not even minorities but also against their own people. One of the important cases is that of Salman Tarsir, who was the governor of Punjab and one of his bodyguards killed him, shot him dead just because he was a proponent against blasphemy. This law is being used indiscriminately to target the minorities, to take away their properties and in many cases putting them into jail for long periods without any recourse to justice. Pakistan is among the most dangerous countries for minorities. Political and human rights activists have time and again urged the UN Human Rights Council to protect the rights of people. These activists are therefore being targeted and charged under Dragonian laws. There is a constant sense of fear and threat in Pakistan which require urgent global attention. Freedom is under fire everywhere in Pakistan. Exactly three decades after the Kashmiri Pandits were forced to abandon their hearts and homes in the valley, a similar kind of sinister terror plot was hedged by Pakistan-sponsored Hezbollah Mujahideen to trigger migration of Hindus from Kishtwar area. This has been revealed in the recent charge sheet filed by NIA before a special court in Jammu against Hezbul Mujahideen militants who were involved in weapon snatching in Kishtwar district of Jammu and Kashmir. The Hezbul Mujahideen, a terror group based in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, was walking on a plot to target Hindu community in Jammu and Kashmir's Kishtwar district and force its members to run away from the area. India's Counter-Terrorist Task Force, National Investigation Agency, recently claimed this in a chart sheet filed before a special court in Jammu in Kishtwar weapon snatching case. On March 3, 2019, two Hezbul terrorists barged into the rented residence of Head Constable Dalip Singh, the escort in charge of the then Deputy Commissioner of Kishtwar, and snatched his service rifle and AK-47. The case was transferred to NIA in August 2019. During the course of the investigation, it was found that the instant case was one of the several acts of terror committed by Hezbul Mujahideen during the years 2018 to 2019 in Kishtuar. The charge sheet read that by carrying out activities like looting of arms and ammunition or targeting prominent and influential Hindus in the area, Hezbul was executing the larger conspiracy to create terror amongst the community in order to force them to run away from the area. Hezbul Mujahideen is the militant group which advocates of merger of Jammu and Kashmir with Pakistan. And that is its aim. And it is the militant group, some say, and it is a fact that it is the armed wing of jamaat e islamiyah and this group is now trying to recreate terror in the upper regions of Kishtwad and Bhadrawa. As you know, that after the all-out operations of the armed forces and security forces in Kashmir, North, East, West Kashmir has already been cleared of militancy. It's only some South Kashmir. And now, these people from there are coming down to Kishtwad region. And they are the ones who are trying to now create a reign of terror over there so that militancy is revived in those upper regions. Three Hezbul terrorists, Osama bin Javed, Harun Abbas Wani, and Zahid Hussain, who carried out the killing of prominent Hindus in Kishtwar, were killed in encounters with security forces at different places in the years 2019 and 2020. The other three Hezbul terrorists against whom charge sheet is filed, were found to be helping Hezbollah outfit by providing logistic support and organizing safe shelter and hideouts for the Hezbollah Qaeda involved in the multiple terror-related incidents. The Hezbollah group may be lying low, but the militants are providing intelligence to other terrorist organizations such as lashkar e taiba and jaish e muhammad and shadow outfits like the Resistance Front to manage successful attacks.
once drawing mostly its recruits from the socio-religious jamaat islami the hizbul now attempts to recruit local people coming from all walks of life students salaried employees and traders acting on the instructions of pakistani establishment hizbul mujahideen has been instrumental in carrying out anti india propaganda and terror activities in jammu and kashmir the operation all out by the security forces against these militants in kashmir valley hizbul mujahideen changed its tactics of recruitment rather than recruiting only jamaat e islamia people they started targeting the youth students educated people traders and everyone one they gave them the wahhabi ideology of islam and how once kashmir is liberated from the hindus and the indian government it would become a panacea for all the islamists over there second was that they said as pakistan was made keeping islam as the unifying factor kashmir also should be there and this find some sympathy with some people there which has resulted in some of them joining this rank although hizbul mujahideen has been designated as a terrorist group by many countries across the world it remains a lawfully operating organization in pakistan moreover pakistan is trying to portray that there has been indigenous reaction in kashmir due to removal of article 370 hence it is promoting dummy outfits like the resistance force to defend itself against nefarious state and non state actors from across the border india has decided to strike back decisively and indian armed forces will keep giving befitting reply to pakistan until it stops terrorism the air of deep uncertainty that has for so long dominated afghanistan does not seem to disappear soon afghanistan is witnessing a constant surge in the violence with no clear end in sight for a war recently two bombs exploded in quick succession in separate locations of a kabul city killing at least 10 people and wounding a dozen others we have reports at least 10 civilians lost their lives in back to back explosions in afghanistan's capital kabul while other parts of the country suffered a power outage after electricity towers were blown up in a separate incident the first bomb exploded in southwestern kabul near the residence of mohammad mohaqiq an advisor to president ashraf ghani killing at least 6 people A second blast took place just hours after the first explosion and it targeted the bus in the Sar A Kares of Kabul city. The two bombings happened in the mostly ethnic Hazara area of the capital. Both blasts were conducted using sticky bombs, a standard device deployed in most strikes across Kabul. Moreover, a car bomb blast in Jalalabad city targeting a military convoy also killed at least two Afghan civilians and wounded 10 others. if you look at the kind of ter- uh, tactics that is going on previously it was targeted you were targeting journalists you were targeting uh, political figure heads who you knew were antagonistic towards the taliban if you now look at the blasts there is not just a sectarian component but there is a general random component what they want to do is to cow down the people of any area where they see the way they fear resistance so that when the taliban finally attacked there is nobody left to oppose the taliban the attacks come as the united states wraps up its longest war by withdrawing the last of its troops along with allied nato forces from afghanistan the last soldiers are scheduled to be gone by september generating fears of increased chaos in the country already deeply insecure over the past month several provinces across the country saw fierce fighting between the afghan security forces and the taliban given the persistent terrorist threats in afghanistan there are serious questions about the us administration's decisions recently lawmakers of both the parties in us expressed concerns over the future of afghanistan those concerns have been stalked by a deadlock in the us back peace talks while the taliban have intensified attacks on government forces after a missed deadline for the us troop departure 
the issue of trust never existed. You had one party, the United States, which wanted to exit. So they wanted to, wanted to hold talks. They wanted to tell the world that this is an orderly withdrawal. The Taliban and the Pakistanis seized upon that particular desire. So on the face of it, they kept on uh, talking. But at the ground level, they did everything to sp spread fear into the, uh, into the minds of the people. Winning trust was never an issue. What they wanted to do was to cow down a particular population from the very beginning, initially by selective targeting and now by random targeting. And uh, I think we will, this will not going to end. This is not going to end well. We will see more of these attacks taking place. The U.S. National Intelligence Council report recently released an assessment that the Taliban would roll back much of the progress made in Afghan women's rights if the Islamist extremists regain national power. Hence, observers say that the new U.S. administration should carry on an honest review of the entire peace process and push the Taliban to make concessions. The talks are crucial to find a lasting solution to the Afghan conflict. But it should not be on the Taliban's terms, which could wipe away whatever little progress Afghanistan has made in the last several years. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Karim Zimek signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.